yksi juttu muuten vielä. Laitapa tuota vielä pois. Okay, so I have two presentations today. Uh, one is about uh, graph theory and graph databases, and the other one is about the application for bookmarks that I made recently. That is a work in project progress, and uh, I'm actually going to present the bookmark app first because the presentation is complete and ready. <laughs> So, <coughs> the app is called Spellbook, and there is a backend called Grimoire, and it's also a library for me uh, merging hierarchies. So, this is an old tale, maybe somebody remembers Grimm's Tales, or has read as a child. It's, the, it's about the, the frog prince. Well, looks ugly, but it's actually a prince. Right when this girl kisses him. So, let's start. The application uses the no for ye graph database. And uh, as I said, the spellbook is the front end app that is vis visible to the user. And Grimoire is the back end which I'm now made in Ruby on Rails, but eventually I think I'm, I'll make it in with Meteor and Vue.js. And uh, I'll show some later, so, so some screenshots and code and uh, live demo of the app. So bear with me. I have this problem. Uh, how, how many else does this problem? of having too many bookmarks and never finding anything from them. I have zero. Okay, we have one guy. Okay. So I guess it's not a common problem or the tools are so bad that people don't use them. So if I, for example, I, I would like to find some, uh, this is related to some of my own projects. Uh, the largest collection is actually for this Audi app called Akasa for which I have 3,500 bookmarks, just for that project. So it's gonna be messy to look something up after like um, five levels, levels of hierarchy. So I've been thinking for a long time, I, I want to make an e easier way to find bookmarks and like organize them. And also Chrome is starting to be very sluggish handling this. And, uh, well, Chrome uses SQLite, and basically it shouldn't be a problem, but for some reason it hasn't been optimized to handle over 10,000 bookmarks. How many people do you think exist in the world who has as many bookmarks? As I, I don't know, maybe 2 to 5 percent, maybe less. <laughs> <laughs> but they are, they are the power users. Yeah. And I also remember there was some fire, Firefox 64 bit with users with thousands of tabs. Some people really like tabs. <laughs> yeah, that's another problem. <laughs> After 100, Chrome always uh, like uh, goes to like a sleep. <laughs> that's just that's something. I don't know what, but just hangs. Okay, so I have this idea. So I had a long time and itch to solve this problem, and uh, <clears throat> I was pondering using the graph database on many of 
other ideas for my own project, programming projects. And uh, well, I on the screen I wondered how should I do this, and I had a moment of here I got uh, realization that uh, I remembered the Demos and Yahoo directory services, and I th thought that the uh, UI could actually be a li little bit like those services. But uh, I saw you also some like, um, well, uh, uh, plans for the views that I made with pa paper and pencil. It had now had the time to like make them pretty and everything, but actually that's the best way to like plan something. And uh, well, web is perfectly suited for modeling with gra graphs and graph databases because it's a, a huge network of links. And uh, well, seems like a small enough a, a project to get really into graph databases and how to make some like uh, apps with them. So let's take a blast from, from, from the past, or actually Demos is still alive, but yeah, I found out that Yahoo directory is now some business services catalog something, and it looks horrible, and didn't provide anything for me at least, anything, anything usable, but okay. So D Demos has these categories, of art, business, computers, games, and so on. And when you click on some of them, you see a subcategory view. And there could be subcategories for that. And then there, there is a list of bookmarks, just the titles and links to the bookmarks. So here are the plans. Uh, this might not, not make much sense, but uh, I, I try to explain as best as I, I can. Uh, so what I thought about. So here's a, like a, there, there will be like a drop down view of the current category and the parent categories and the related categories, which should probably go to the right here. And then you have a list of the bookmarks, but along with the bookmarks, you will see uh, which other, other categories they can belong to. Like this is the main point, that the bookmark can belong to many categories, and the categories are uni unique by name, and also the bookmarks are unique by the URL. So when you add m new things to, into the system, it automatically organizes the categories for you. And the categories is a hierarchy. It's a, it's a strict hierarchy. But what makes it a graph or a network is that the bookmarks can belong to many categories. You'll see it, it later when I demo the app. <coughs> and also, you could select uh, many categories at once, like a faceted search. Like uh, get all bookmarks which belong to all of these categories and then get a, them order, ordered by a timeline. When you have last vi visited them, when you have uh, added them, when you have last modified them, and you could sc scroll by year, or a month even, or a day, whatever. But there are like options to make this easy, really usable. And this what was the hard part about, like, you, you could have a, the root category R and category B. But then there is a same URL here, and tr you're trying to add this one to the system. And there are different categories here in between. So what do you do? You uh, pop up the B category, so that it, its parent is the R. And keep these other categories as they are, or actually these parents will become the new additional categories for these bookmarks, but both of them belong to B. So it kind of flattens the hierarchy and also bubbles up the common categories. So on the 
when you go to the root level on the like a view of the app, you'll see maybe some categories that don't belong to the top, but then you can organize them and like uh, move these, uh, I guess, uh, uh, tutorials or like BS uh, feelings down below to the programming category. And uh, there are also more complex cases if there are like a repeated categories that already exist in, in, in the bookmark you're trying to, trying to import. <coughs> and uh, actually, I thought <coughs> two weeks about how to solve this. And uh, then I had a, uh, then I finally, finally got it. You probably can't read it, uh, I, and well, what, the, there's some textual description of the algorithm, but I'll show code later. So, uh, a little bit about glossary and uh, what the bookmarks and categories look in my app. So there is uh, following properties. There is an URL which is unique and it must be present on a bookmark. And there is a title which is indexed and it's present. And then there can be icon and icon URL. And then there are <coughs> timestamps for created, updated, and visited at. And uh, bookmarks has relations to many categories. And uh, category is a more familiar ter term, maybe it's a bookmark folder. But uh, these are actually categories and not folder or directories. And uh, they have a name which is unique and it must be present because it, it would make much sense, much sense to have a category without the name. <coughs> and uh, there are timestamps created that and updated that. Uh, this is a strict hierarchy, like um, like a tree structure. So every category <coughs> can only have one parent category, and uh, but they have can have many subcategories. So it's like a tree, like this. And uh, category has many unique bookmarks, of course, because they are unique. But uh, at that point, does anyone have questions? No? Maybe later there will be. So this is the tag soup. And it's kind of uh, nasty to parse because there are no end tags on these DL or P tags or many others. So, but that's still like a de facto spec of bookmarks. So this is used in modern browsers? Yes, it's used in every modern browser still for some way, weird reason. Okay. <laughs> And uh, well, I tried to parse this with different Ruby HTML parses, and all of them failed miserably. Like uh, they got about 2,000 bookmarks, they got about 4,000 bookmarks out of the 12,000 uh, total. So it didn't work really well. <laughs> like one of them only got like one-tenth one of the bookmarks parsed right. That's, that's just amazing. <laughs> okay, but then I tried Python, with, which has this beautiful soup 4, which is made for like uh, crawling websites, some information from websites which doesn't use semantic web. So it could be machine parsable. But, uh, oh, it parsed it or oh, every bookmark, just right. So now I have well formed HTML, and I can use that to feed into this bookmark game called Markio. That's basically just uh, packages bookmarks as Ruby objects. And then there is uh, 
will again these constraints. And uh, the hierarchy forms a directed isocyclic graph, which is commonly called a DAG, DAG. And it's a rooted tree, so it has one root, root node at the top. And it has directed edges between categories. And uh, it's usually, I found it's uh, maybe better uh, to make the relationships that way, that something belongs to some, something instead of something is like a parent of something, or like the owner of something. It it's also makes like the curious more like, uh, resemble more like English, like something belongs to something. <coughs> and uh, all Yes, <coughs> this is also an important thing, that all the nodes must form a unique path to the root node. So there can't be many relationships of like a belongs to between sub subcategories and foreign categories. But uh, okay, I could have a bookmark collections and then I could have multiple roots, but that's a different thing and way to think in, in the future. But at one point, uh, that's going to be like a, well, obviously, I, I want to make this app available for other people than me. So I, I will need the collections at least at some point. So now we get to the code. It's actually, uh, yeah, well, I used two weeks to resolve how to combine all the constraints, because actually the thing is uh, quite simple in like when you describe it as a text but when, when you try to model it as a graph database and uh, like make sure that, that the updating or mer merging the bookmarks into the existing collection works it's a little bit trickier and the first solution was about one, 140 lines of code and I thought it's not pretty it must there must be an easier way and uh, after a while, I found a way to handle it about it in about the 15 lines of code. So, <clears throat> what I do here, I find the existing categories for some path, and this path is uh, like a array of uh, the bookmark folders of which you are importing. So, then I get the parents of those categories that are already in the database. And, uh, well, this is uh, the main method, which is, that l makes the like, uh, resolving of the, how the categories should be re re uh, <coughs> sorry, rearranged. And, uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, and this is actually quite simple. I just uh, read the subsets of categories that already exist. And uh, <coughs> map the parents with those. And this other function, um, like mer merges together parts that uh, Okay, I'll, I'll try to explain it more simply. You have a bookmark in some uh, five levels deep in somewhere, and it has, you are importing it, some bookmark file, and uh, let's say you have uh, already in the book, in the app, you already have the categories on levels two and four, let's say. And set then you have the levels five, three, and one, which are new to the database. And I split like the path of, on those new parts. And these are the things that must be added. And uh, <coughs> these are the like, uh, become the strength, strengths. And 
after like uh, this like uh, makes uh, rearranges how the old paths should be and after that I just add the new parts here and uh, then I put them on the database but maybe it's uh, more easier to see on the demo app how it works <coughs> so okay <coughs> it's still a little bit crude looking it's just a basic bootstrap and uh, I really just didn't use any time to make it look pretty about <laughs> but let's see <clears throat> guess it would be a good good idea to check that it's running I also had to start Neo for J. A minute. Okay, <coughs> so this is the main category. I haven't imported all of my bookmarks, but as you can see, there are some some main level categories here, like my project or my proc, uh, internet and uh, entertainment, and so on. So if I go to one of these categories, so. The related category is on blue here, and the parent category here on gray. And uh, let's go over here, and there are news. And it's actually a top level category too, but it's also a bookmark folder on that free level scheme. But when I imported it, it like, uh, made these bookmarks belong to other categories besides news. This belongs to cryptography too, and as does this one too, and this belongs to Python and news, and uh, well, yes. Let's see. There is uh, this is uh, like uh, local news, or like, uh, and there are general news and technology news also, which holds help this bookmark, and. Uh, Yes. And of course I can also edit them. And and also this is uh, like the Actually, it's just one evening to make this into an appy and also make these views. 
So Ruby and Rails is going to be really handy to use sometimes. And you got all of these links. So maybe you is it any readable? This is better. So you can go to the parent category or to the top. And uh, you can also update, like, uh, use regular REST methods here, like <coughs> uh, put and post and so on. One question How is the ID or is it, does it have dashes? Is it just. Uh, these are you, uh, unique uh, identifiers. Okay. UU IDs. And does it generate them on itself? Uh, it's actually the Ruby library that I use that generates these. Uh, I think Neo4j used some sorter IDs. No reconnection. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I didn't have to do any work to use UU IDs. Or kids. <coughs> so, um, let's see some code. Have you thought about visualizing the uh, stuff in the graph database somehow? Because it's graph based, it could be, yeah. I could be also somewhat. Based or yeah, actually, when I made this presentation, uh, it uses impress.js, which uses uh, like the modern possibilities, like a 3D CSS transforms. Mm -hmm. And you could quite easily make a 3D view. Yeah. But uh, I really have to give some thought about how to make it really usable mm -hmm. yeah. instead of such, some how it can be. Yeah, yeah. Could be more cool than useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> yeah, but there could be use cases like you zoom out, yeah, and you can see that okay, I have a lot of things here, mm. so this is probably where I, you know, I was thinking about going. Yeah, something like that. Mm. Show us your graph in, in like in the Neo browser. Oh yeah, it, it should probably look yeah, look yeah. fantastic. Mm. Yeah, I almost forgot good thing I mentioned. <clears throat> so th this limits it to the 25 results. Did you change the resolution, by the way? Or is it just... Mm. Oh, yeah. But I think you can, like, make it limit to 25,000 and then yeah. we can wait it for to render. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let's get a little bit more. Yeah. But 2,000. Two no, no, 250. Because this uh, JavaScript SVG thing just gets uh, slow after. Yeah, I remember. Yes. I put like enormous amounts there and, yeah. and I waited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> but okay, these yellow ones are bookmarks. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a really cool thing about Neo4j that they has this visualization of the database. So like these are database objects and these have you properties. Here's the name and the ID. Yeah I think it's it's like the most it's like a killer feature because you yeah this is just so pretty. Yeah. When you are doing it or showing it to someone it's just it's just so impressive that you can mm. say, say that here's your database and yeah, and also, uh, w when you make more complex queries, you probably want to see how many rows it actually returns. It says it here, that it returned return 250 rows. I make this a uh, little bit com more complex query and uh, actually had double rows here. And, well, uh, I actually asked on the Slack channel of Neo4j, for help to optimize the query and make it, make it better. And uh, mm -hmm. got a, well, got, got a much better solution, and I, which was almost the one that I already made up also. 
by looking at the like uh, references of of your uh, cipher, which is the query language of Neo4j, and it, it's actually um, at first it looks so really lot like SQL, but it's not actually SQL, right? Or actually, because you're working with graphs, you have to think differently than using the SQL mindset. So, but I'll show some queries in a minute, but I wanted to show one more thing about the, the was it describe or text? Do you remember? I don't remember but anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See if it's here. Anyway, this has also these like uh, playbooks, and here is some query to create a person got a uh, like node uh, which has these properties in the braces. Actually, there, here's an explanation too. But uh, well, I can't remember how was it the profiling. But basically, you get the query plan and see what takes the most most time doing some query. <coughs> so also, well, I'll show some code at this point. So here are the models. There's actually some stupid logging also. But basically, here are the properties I already showed you. And this is how you make relations in the using Neo4j RB library. And it's a, that is actually a really nice library because if you have used Ruby on Rails, it's Almost exactly like using active model. Like a, basically, the syntax is the same for defining things as using SQL databases. And uh, then you can make indexes. And by the way, many graph databases, unlike many no SQL databases, also are uh, provide uh, like uh, acid guarantees, like atomicity. Uh, consistency and so on, and you can have different different validations, like uh, that the categories must be unique, and there are no repeated categories on the path, and so on, and when these are some stupid logging stuff, so not actually needed or used, and then there is a bookmark. And because the URLs are unique, you can find them. And if they don't exist, then create, create a new bookmark. And this is also the thing I showed you earlier, three slides with code that combines the categories into the existing database. And uh, well, I don't use this system. <coughs> And, well, there are the validations. And categories look like this. Basically, quite similar in the definition. Just different properties, different relations. And, uh, okay, here, here we have some queries. This is just a Ruby based of like quoting, uh, quoting uh, multiple strings, or so you can just write the SQL here. So uh, this matches category whose name is root, and that doesn't uh, actually. This is just uh, like a placeholder for the query. And uh, it matches any category 
that doesn't have any parent categories and returns a distinct set of those. And here's the other end, the leave categories that don't have any subcategories. And uh, th this uh, was actually a bit tricky because this theory where you can have variable length of properties, so the path length could be variable. Like in SQL, you, uh, it, it would mean you don't know how many joints there will be. And this is the syntax of like uh, the asterisk marks that it's a variable length, and then you can specify how many uh, arrays at, that it must be at least one one relation ship away or and actually this doesn't have the end part, but it could be at most three or so. And then I ordered those by the length of the path. And uh, I think this was actually the query I needed some help with. <coughs> Sure, because I haven't looked this code for, I don't know, two to three weeks. Uh, this basically uh, like a bubbles up a hierarchy of the tree. Or uh, actually, uh, yes, so it's the, when you move a category, it saves the parents, bookmarks to the parent category. Anyway. And here are the things I already showed you. Uh, this asyclicity is an important thing regarding graphs because, uh, well, it uh, complicates queries and uh, lots of things if you have, can have loops in the graph. Let's see if, uh, maybe let's move on. Well, uh, uh, one more thing. There is uh, also the relationships in graph databases are first class objects. So you can also uh, model them using this library as an own object that has any, <coughs> can, can have any, any type from, relays, uh, from node and uh, it always points to a category. But, okay, let's move on. I'll go back to the presentation. So, <coughs> uh, oh, two is actually really easy to make with Ruby and Rails. There is this, uh, a few games that are like a quality code, like a doorkeeper, and for authentication there are there is device and, uh, well, a couple of others, too. So, well, I, I could have users with their own collections. And also, one important thing to make is to mark some categories private, so to keep work-related stuff or other stuff you want to keep private, away from like, uh, being public. Uh, and after I have these, I could make a, like a global searches, searches of the public bookmarks uh, about if other people have the same bookmark or URL bookmark, you could find related category, through related categories, some maybe related bookmarks and so on. And uh, well, of course, uh, browser extension would, would be really nice to make and actually I looked in, into some front-end stuff that would help that and uh, I was really really positively surprised about Meteor. It has been on my like, to-do list to think for things to learn for a long time and it felt that I was really productive started to, to, start <coughs> to start doing something with it. And also there is Vue.js. I've been using AngularJS for like nine months. 
now on my last workplace. Uh, but there is this uh, thing about Angular, Angular 2. Uh, it has split into two forks. And uh, Vue.js actually uses com components, a little bit like uh, this, uh, what's it called? <coughs> well, anyway, web components are the way of the future. And there, Angular 2 will use components in some way. But uh, last I checked, it wasn't sure what is the way, actually, like exactly. So Vue.js resembles AngularJS, but also renders things fast. And Just use React. Yeah, maybe I also should really <laughs> use React. <laughs> but also there's a confusion with re in the React world about uh, do I implement my own flux, or which is whose flux I'd use, and should I use reactive fl style of fl flux like Redux, or what, what, what should I do? <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah. Anyway, uh, one, one possibility is to put a personal search engine uh, based on your bookmark collection, like an index, just those websites. So you would never have like a 404 for these bookmarks that are in your collection even though you um, might have saved the bookmark 15 years ago. Nowadays I have like a 10% maybe of the oldest, uh, actually much, much, much bigger percent of the old bookmarks give me a 404, not found. And uh, yeah, actually this is one example. <laughs> because delicious.com doesn't exist anymore. Or, or actually, uh, well, my collection has gone away. <laughs> Delicious.com exists, but uh, I once had a, I once used Delicious. And uh, well, you could crawl the bookmarks and su suggest to the user that, hey, maybe you should check these bookmarks. These have moved. If they have moved permanently, maybe you well, change the URL without asking, but uh, about not once you could give a list, hey, these bookmarks might not work anymore. You can, if you have like 10,000 bookmarks or so, mm. it crawls them like in 10 seconds or something like that. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it takes some time, but not too much. Yeah, not, 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 not that much. Yeah. And you could actually purchase the bookmarks somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now is the question time. On. Yeah. So when. Obviously, you have your browser that you use, and I guess you use some kind of browser system that keeps them in sync yeah. uh, from browser to machine to machine. Mm. Uh, so, obviously, you could also keep your web application in sync by just yeah. every once in a while. Yeah, I've actually you... thought about that. And uh, I have a way to like uh, export uh, bookmarks back from graph database to the bookmark collection. And also, uh, personally I use Xmarks and uh, Chrome Sync. And, but uh, basically you could make duplicate bookmarks which would be combined again when you re-import them. Or you could use aliases which are supported in some browsers but maybe not in Chrome. Uh, any other questions? How much disk space do you need for an installation of your app? Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, okay. Wrong window. Uh, 150 megabytes of this, but sure if there's some extra stuff, maybe. Probably node. Components take a huge mm. percent of that. I, I don't really understand why they are so. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, the database is 132 megabytes. <laughs> It's actually quite a lot, I think. That's one thing to like uh, examine. 
up if it could be optimized. Did you look at other options or just more for Neo4j? Yeah, I looked at OrientDB too, and actually maybe want to use it in other projects, but uh, because Neo4j has the like a largest, la la largest community and uh, it's mo most popular craft database nowadays, so it's the uh, e easiest way to get started. But there is uh, like um, there, there are many op other options on the other presentation I mentioned a few. But uh, maybe any other questions? Do you use it every day? No, it's, it's not that ready yet, okay. <laughs> but I wish <laughs> to use it every day. Is the is the collection of the bookmarks like mm -hmm. the tens of thousands of ones? Mm -hmm. Is it you always had the same collections? From like year 1995, you just added yeah. ones. Yeah, because I have like a, a max settings also. For example, for the graphic de design programs, they are originally from like a end of 90s. I just copied them over to machine, to machine. Because that's the way computers work. But Maybe. some systems apparently don't. <laughs> as a, as a, as a as a person who has never learned to use internet bookmarks, I'm, I'm impressed. Okay, thank you. I have zero bookmarks, always. <laughs> yeah. Okay, maybe we could have a little break. How about RSS feeds? Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an idea too. I, I, I've given zero thought about that, but thanks for the idea. <laughs> yeah, because I've been working with this one content management system that has a lot of this kind of relational data mm. in it, uh, which is in SQL currently, but mm. I've been thinking of doing that. So maybe first just going through all the content objects mm. and then going through a second round and creating all the relations because it might be complicated to try to figure out if it's there or not. Yeah, you know, I just yesterday, because of the stuff I do currently at work, thought the similar kind of things. I uh, just it's on Drupal, and thinking about I'm thinking about import and uh, and then I have this craft database on my own projects and I wonder why every CMS system you uses relation data database because they try to model the web, they try to model a free form like structure of web pages, so it would also be an application area for craft databases obviously. I think Neo4j was originally created for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, did you know that, that the Adobe Creative Cloud uses Neo4j? I think it's the, like a biggest uh, customer okay. for Neo4j. Interesting. Yeah. But okay, time for a break maybe. Yeah. Just, or just to start the second one. I would have a little break. Five minutes, then go. <laughs> <laughs>
Ready? Okay. So uh, let's look a bit about the theory behind your graph databases. So it's called graph theory. And uh, well, you can think of many things as graphs or model many things as graphs. And uh, shortly, here is the This is really small. Okay, maybe this works. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Even small. Okay, uh, we're gonna briefly go over these things. I'll put a link to the like a full text somewhere after this presentation. And uh, there is a first. There is a the first problem in graph theory dates back from the 18th century, and Leonard Euler proved it as uh, impossible. But uh, yeah, I'll show it later. Later on, and uh, we look look at applications of graphs and the terminology and the types of graphs and the uh, important kinds of graph classes, uh, their re regularity, completeness, connectedness, and finiteness. And then the models of storage. And uh, well, also knot theory relates to graphs and topology. But uh, I have to admit, I didn't finish these slides, so maybe I just put them on the link. <coughs> so, what do all of these separ separate things have in common? Like maps, paths, water routes, fungi, and their routes, and the ecosystems, and on the other hand, transportation, logistics, route planning, roads, walkways, railways, and city structure, telephone networks, electric grids, plumbing, knots, electric circuits, manufacturing pipelines, social networks, internet, routing, hyperlinks, wiki articles, and so on. Like, uh, lots of things could be modeled as graphs, and <coughs> for example, the knots, uh, you could make a graph of where, where these crossings, um, make nodes of these crossings, and the paths between them, you would model as uh, edges between nodes. And it's actually used in knot theory that way. Yes, there is a graph. And uh, this is the old, oldest problem in graph theory about the uh, city of Königsberg and its seven bridges, which are here in green. And uh, the problem is, can you walk over the bridges and never cross a water route or the same bridge again? Well, Leonard Euler proved it's impossible because there is not this uh, Euler cycle. And uh, let's see them. <coughs> it's like this. So you have the bridges, and you make a simple picture, and even simple picture, and it's actually a graph then. So you have the different uh, land areas as the nodes, and the bridges are the ed edges. And uh, yeah, there, there is no error in circuit between these bridges. So it's always one bridge short, uh, no matter which route you try to walk all the bridges. 
And the solution is the first theorem of graph theory, specifically in planar graph theory. And by the way, the city nowadays is called Kaliningrad. I thought it was in a different place, but it's a form of the old, old person nation. And well, Kaliningrad is now part of Russia in a weird place. And uh, <coughs> well, there are variations of these problems. There could be like beer in, in the middle on the island, and there could be red knight and blue lord or whatever, and a bishop. And all want to have different reasons to get the people in and out of the island. Well, the bishop obviously hopes that everything get, gets home without being too drunk. And uh, these are jealous, jealous to each other, these blue and red guys. So the, there could be eight, nine, and tenth bridge. And uh, any ideas where, where the, would they build them so that the, the blue, blueprints, for, for example, uh, <coughs> he wants to build an eighth bridge to his lush, all the bridges and end at the cast house to break his victory. Of course, he wants the red prince to be in, unable to duplicate the feet from the red castle. Where does the blue prince put the eighth bridge? Well, um, I, I remember, if I remember correctly, it was here. And also the red prince uh, wants to put then a uh, ninth bridge in, over to like a uh, so that the blue prince that well, you can well from my loss too. And the bishop once starting starting become, become furious about the bridge building and upsets the town's well shown and worse contributes to excessive drunkenness. With the, uh, the all these bridges contribute to excessive drunkenness. So he wants to build a tenth bridge that allows all the inhabitants to walk the bridges and return to their own base. So, okay, the solution looks like this. If the Wi-Fi isn't too slow, or <coughs> the system doesn't go to beach. Here was the eighth bridge and the ninth and the tenth. So after that, everybody gets home without being too drunk. So, okay, let's go back to not this, but. <coughs> but two of the seven bridges did not survive the bombing of Königsberg. No, yeah. There are only a, uh, actually, this was the current bridges. There are four bridges left out of those, those seven, but they built a new one, and these two are like gone. <coughs> Internet is pretty. A little bit slow, maybe. Okay. On to the graph theory. <coughs> so, there are many like uh, subjects of study that relate to graph theory or like are very closely connected to it, like network theory. And also, the well, topology relates to the knot theory also. And there are, in computer science, many data structures and ling linguistic tools and other language processing is related to graphs or 
our graph theory could be applied to those areas also. And also, cybernetics, if you have <coughs> heard any sci-fi, it's actually interesting almost all of these areas. And uh, Roy Ascot describes cybernetics as the art of interaction in dynamic networks. And every network is a graph. <coughs> so, uh, we have hierarchies, we have organizational, uh, organizational, organizational hierarchies, oops, and computer file systems, uh, web browser bookmark folders, and uh, <coughs> in computing, there is, in, especially, especially in functional code programming, there is a lambda calculus, which uh, uses graph reduction, so like uh, the compilers use graph reduction to like uh, optimize things. Uh, if something isn't used, it could be left out of the graph, or some things could be optimized in other ways so, uh, by simplifying the graph of calculation. And uh, here is actually an interesting link to, called the, to dissect a mockingbird, which is an informal and ent entertaining introduction to lambda calculus. <coughs> and also there is a P calculus, which is also called the process calculus, which is concerned about uh, uh, like uh, how to model uh, some um, computating processes between maybe disparate systems in and uh, in concurrently and with time and well it's an interesting thing and also pro programming language theory uses graphs a lot and type theory you have categories of types and you can model these as a hierarchy or a network or a graph and also abstract syntax trees you use like a trees and uh, well those are also graphs then you have uh, like uh, different kinds of networks in the nature and human built networks you have axons and dendrites in the brain you have neural lymphatic and blood circulation systems in your body uh, genetics actually uh, it's, it's interesting that genetics uh, relates or uses a knot theory to solve problems with uh, like uh, DNA becoming tangled uh, messes of things like uh, use complex knots. Uh, so knot theory actually has practical applications besides tie knots and knowing which tie, which knot to tie. And which is a knot or which is an unknot. But anyway, there are a list of lots of things that uh, are networks, like bee colonies, social networks. Uh, actually, identified ore deposits in mining also could be thought of as graph, because the the thing you want is in like a. <coughs> You find a gold deposit, and there is a narrow way maybe connecting to another deposit, and so on. But, uh, and also maps. That's why I have this background here of New York. Because you have rail routes, you have roads, water routes, whatever. And, well, then there is transportation routes, and all the city infra infrastructure. And their topology, not sense, so on. Actually, I thought I'd never be interested in topology or understand it, but uh, lately I've been interested in knot theory. Because it's also abstract, but graph theory can make it that more tang tangible. Also, <coughs> there are many kinds of networks in computer science like obviously the internet and with routing links, hypertext and so on and artificial neural networks and uh, these are interesting these, these radi radial basis net function networks 
which is also related to like AI. And clustering related things with different algorithms like the core means, nearest neighbor, and other algorithms. And then in control theory, you have different like a description of processes and electric circuits and digital signal processing flows and well flow based flow based programming. <coughs> and uh, well many data structures use trees like binary search algorithms use bit binary trees, then you could have ternary trees or trees which could have even more like a nose from a parent node. Uh, and trees are actually used in uh, storing scraplet dictionary, for example, or different kind of dictionaries. And then you, then you have directed acyclic trees, and uh, well, many search engines also use different kind of trees, like the engrams, suffix tree, citation index, document term matrix, which is actually not a tree, but it's a tip. Yeah, yeah, and the index, uh, inverted indexes as the most common, maybe. And, well, computer and linguistics use also many kind of graphs, despite just trees. There is like, a, in automata theory, there is a regular languages and formal languages, and all of these could be uh, described as uh, definite or indefinite. Uh, De sorry, de 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 <coughs> deterministic finite automata or indefinite de 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 uh, automata. Anyway, uh, those uh, all of those could be drawn as graphs. And actually, actually, actually regular expressions. Uh, does anyone know how regular expressions are really like uh, processed? Black magic. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good 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 answer. Because they are actually turned into these uh, non deterministic finite automata. Like uh, they're parsed. The regular expression is parsed, and you make a graph out of this. It's called non deterministic finite automata. And then you turn that into deterministic finite automata, which is simpler to process. And then you run. It's like a state machine, basically. It's, well, for many programmers, it's, I guess it's a black magic, and unless you look up how does things, this thing really work. <laughs> okay, now on to the terminology of graphs. We have a, obviously we have graph and <coughs> uh, vertex. Commonly, maybe you call them nodes, and. Uh, they are like the entities. And then you connect these entities with edges. And <coughs> it's a, usually an ed edge is a binary relation, so it connects two nodes together. Uh, but it's not always the case. And they can also be called arcs, which can be undirected or they can be directed. Or they could be also called, called arrows, which are, are usually they are directed edges. And then if you had, have an edge that comes back to the starting point, it's called a loop. And uh, link uh, has two distinct end vertices, but um, well, I should have drawn an example, maybe, of that. <laughs> okay, then uh, when you search the graph, you find paths between the two nodes through these edges and nodes. So a path consists of multiple connected edges and the vertices they connect. And, uh, yeah. Hmm. So this A connects through the path B to this D node here. And the graphs could be labeled or unlabeled. 
most graph databases nowadays use actually a model called uh, labeled property graph model, which Neo4j actually pioneered. And uh, there is, uh, well, just the vertices, vertices could have labels or just the edges or both. And uh, <coughs> when you have these labels, you kind of make sets of nodes or relations, which you can base your your resource searches on. And then there are these isomorphisms, uh, which um, well go, go more in a more are more theoretic. But also a good thing to know uh, if you want to find, exa for example, if some graph is a subgraph of, of, or another, <coughs> if, if a graph is a subgraph of, or of another graph, then you have the problem called subgraph isomorphism and it's NP complete, complete pro problem. So it's good to know that maybe it's not a good idea to try to devise an own, own algorithm for that problem but looking for some existing algorithm. So, um, and there are dif different kinds of graphs, or sorry, types of graphs. And uh, there's the undirected, directed, uh, mixed, multigraph. Uh, let's see what the, these look like. <clears throat> if it just would load. Ah. Okay. <coughs> so on undirected graph, you don't have any arrows that are, are directed, or any edges that point to some direction. And then you have, on directed graph, every edge is, uh, could point to another node, or, or it could also point in both ways. And then you can have a mixed graph where some edges have direction and other others don't don't have a have a direction. And then there is a multigraph where is uh, where there could be loops like multiple. Uh, th these are actually the links, I think. And then there is loops. And. Uh, <coughs> Uh, there is actually, early, earlier I mentioned, there is um, that edges, edges have, are like binary relations, always be, with, between two nodes. But there, is, there are also hypergraphs, and some graph databases use that model, where the edges could point to like three nodes or more nodes, not just two. Like a, one edge points, to, like a, well, con connects together multiple nodes. And uh, well, you could always model that using uh, like a node in the middle, like in the place of the hyper edge. But uh, maybe it has some reason why it, why some graph databases use that model also. Maybe it's more efficient to make the queer, queries or something. Haven't really yet looked at those graph databases. <coughs> and then you have a uh, quiver which is a directed multi-graph. So it could have like a multiple relations, be relations between nodes and, uh, and they are all, all di directed. <coughs> and this particular graph actually so uh, how to form a binary gray code, which is used in like uh, coding an angles, on like in in industry, like in mechatronics or like uh, these control systems, maybe in robotics. 
to. But uh, it's a little bit small, but there is a zero, one, zero, and if you change one of these, you get another binary number. For example, the, here is a zero, one, one, and here is zero, 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 and here is, uh, well, the fourth option. It's one, one, zero. And uh, then you could have a simple graph, which is a tree that is connected. And actually, trees uh, have, could have the property of they being uh, a rooted graph, which means that one of the nodes is the, on the top or, or the bottom node. And you could always, if this would be directed tree, you could always change which one is the root node and just let like, the old nodes fall down. It might sometimes be really useful to know. And you have weighted graphs. These are used for like uh, planning flights, for example. Uh, so you have some cities and distances between cities, and you find the shortest or uh, shortest route or the cheapest route or whatever route you want between two cities. So basically, the weight is just a number. It could uh, be a cost, a length, or a duration, a capacity, or whatever what you need on the problem. And. Uh, <coughs> You could also uh, use different kind of algorithms that uh, you can use to calculate the, which would be the preferable, uh, preferable route between two nodes. And also this is the way weird Edge case where you have Edge which don't connect to any other node. But I don't know, I only found one, one example which is this root system. And, uh, well, it's kind of a, it, we are, we are this. So, <clears throat> I guess this would be the last slide and then I'll just give you the link where you can find this. So, <coughs> oops. Go here. So, <coughs> uh, regular graph uh, is a graph where each vertex has the same number of neighbors. So, for example, these all not these all nodes have a uh, two neighbors, but it could connect also the third one, or fourth one, and so on. And uh, then you can, can have a complete graph where every node connects to every other node. And this, well, this forms a nice pen pentagram here. <laughs> and uh, you could have a planar graph where you can uh, like draw the graph in a way that no edge crosses another edge. It's a quite important thing with the knot, uh, knot theory also. If, uh, well, if, well, anyway, look up knot theory, it's really interesting stuff. And also this is related to circle packing theorem, if you can slightly different size of circles. <coughs> you can like, describe them with plan, uh, planar graphs. And usually the graphs are finite, but there are also infinite graphs. But, uh, well, I don't know how, how to draw them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is an important thing about uh, 
if the graph is connected or not. For example, if I would cut this edge here, it would be unconnected. But if it if that that edge exists, it's connected graph. So every every node connects through some path to another node. <coughs> and uh, this is starting to be, become really like uh, theoretic, but uh, this is the point to get home that uh, you can turn the edges into the nodes, and sometimes it help, helps with the modeling. Anyway, I think that's all, and the presentation would be found in. In Teams.io, I'll find the address. Post it to Twitter or something. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. But. Uh, did you have in the next slide whether it's unfinished or did you had some. Yeah, I have some those. unfinished slides yeah. there. You had I finished them and post that. You had a list of. Like all known graph data databases. Yeah. So I think yeah. people would. I wanted would to make a graph or out of that, but I didn't have yeah. time. Yeah, but I think that people would like to like see that and hear about yeah. what made you like pick not pick now. Uh, <clears throat> well, it, it's most popular in Tas largest user base, so it's um, you always find solutions to problems. Also, there are quite many people using, using uh, Orient DB and some people using uh, Titan and Orient DB. And uh, oh, actually, I would show that list I find here. So, here are some list of graph databases and uh, these ones use the property graph model, and uh, these use attribute multigraph. No idea what is it, what, what it, it, that is, but uh, Dex and slash Sparksy, uh, it, uh, it has changed the name. It was used, called Dex earlier, and now it's called Sparksy. And it's actually one of the rare graph databases that is written in other, other language than Java. For some reason, all of the graph databases are written in Java, or very many of them it is. And then there is this hypergraph database which uses the hypergraph model. And well, it's also object-oriented database and multi-relational. Very, sounds very like a, well, interesting stuff. Also maybe en enterprise -y. And also there are few databases that use the RDF triple model, which uh, if somebody ha has been looking up uh, what is semantic web about, that uh, it's really closely connected with to that. You have some subject, some, uh, I don't know what they call it here, but relation, and some, sorry, object, relation, and su subject. But basically, three things collected together and a list of those and you can make a disp describe a graph in that way also. But I guess that's all now. Is it that this I ran when I tried the Neo, uh, yeah. it had this limitation that it's only one one graph per, per one server process or something like that. You didn't have like databases. Yeah, they have, uh, well you could use multiple databases but I there is also this enterprise version, and I think it has the clusters. Okay. Uh, more, more like. Yeah, but like when you install MySQL to, mm. to a server, you can la have like 10 databases, but yes. at least a year ago when I used Neo, you could have only one database per, per mm. server. Did you use the embedded version or, or the server version? I have no idea. I took yeah. the one that was free because <laughs> yeah. the first thing that, that when, when back, a year back mm. that you ran into when you went went to the near website was this ten thousand dollar for startups mm. pricing. But so that has changed. I think. Uh, uh, no, I don't think. But there is this community version, and if you really make some money with Neo4j, you really have to pay some money for them. 
Yeah, but yeah, 10,000 for is like an open source guy. It's, it's like preposterous. Yeah, that, yeah. That's one thing to keep in mind when you choose a craft this. Do you know some... But actually, I think you, with Nelp, you can uh, configure different uh, multiple databases on different okay. addresses. They use this. Yeah, but I don't want to use hacks like that. I want mm. to say that uh, use database dictators and, and stuff mm. like that, but, yeah. but it wasn't that easy. Yeah, yeah maybe, it's not. Maybe it's something like solar cores, technically, that you could in the future have many. Yeah, maybe. Because before you had to only run <laughs> multiple solar versions of and, solar. And no. also, have you investigated like those uh, graph visualization tools and those? They were all. All also very very expensive, like mm. a thousand euros for for some tool. So yeah, yeah. everything seems to be expensive <coughs> about the crafts. Yeah, and um, but there are also some like uh, open source tools. Also, there is a uh, Craftbiz, for example. Yeah, which you could like uh, make uh, beautiful pictures of crafts mm -hmm. and plan how how things relate to each other, but also you can always use pen, pen, and, pen, ah, pen and paper. And, uh, but uh, yeah, there are Linkurios. That, does that cost something? What? Linkurios. I have no idea. I think it's free, yeah. but you, they have our freemium, freemium, maybe. By the way, did you know that this image is in public domain? Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, that's all false. Do you know any users, like, who does use uh, graph databases in large scale in Finland, for example? Companies or projects or... Mm, in Finland? Yeah. Mm. I, don't know. I don't know in Finland. Yeah, me neither. Mm. I think probably somewhere where you don't maybe think about it being. Yeah. I heard this rumor that Yleisradio had used Neo4j, but when it was supposed to cost them, like, 50,000 euros per year mm. per server or something like that, they switched to PostgreSQL. Okay, yeah. I, I don't really know. Me neither. It would be fun to know, mm. because probably somewhere someone has like a megalomaniac or neo for j instance or something. Yeah, mm. could be. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I guess that's all. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>